So it's me, your border man, NJ to the city, reporting for NJ to the city news, my independent news brand, etc. So here's how it goes. I literally just wrote down two and a half pages full of NJ to the city news topics, and I want to go and get to some of them, knowing all the new free space on my phone that I have to do so. So um, let's get into them. Um, starting on the third page, more so. So Sabrina Carpenter uh, is now at least from the trailer I watched the other day, is Spider-Gwen. She's been casted as Spider-Gwen. And so if you have no clue who the Sabrina Carpenter is, uh, you would have to go back to specifically Girl Meets World and back in like 20 whatever year started. Um, to I want to say 2015 and 2017 or whatever um, on Disney Channel. Those are my estimated years. Because uh, I definitely know I used to watch, you know, in my mid to in my early teens, I, I used to actually, you know, actually, actually, not just actually, I used to watch Disney, Nick, and Disney and Nickelodeon very heavily, not just in my early teens. Somewhere in elementary school, towards my late teens, I used to watch it very heavily. If not somewhere from my, you know, in elementary school to my middle teens, if not late, but I would probably say late teens. Um, but definitely over the last like three, four years, I have not watched it whatsoever for the most part. I've watched it here and there, but it's like one out of five when I watch it. Other than that, that I'm always watching sports. Literally over the last like four years, if not five years or however many years, I've been watching a lot more sports than I've been watching anything else. Promise you. So I definitely do not know everything about um, when um, the series started versus when it ended. But like I say, you know, I watched, you know, Disney and Nick here and there, one out of five, but I just didn't go out my way to watch it like I used to as I was growing up. You know, I don't know whether it was my late teens that I stopped watching it or whether it was my, you know, early 20s because I'm 22. So I don't know whether it was over the last three years, but I know it was somewhere in my, somewhere between my late, my late teens, if not early 20s, that I stopped watching it as, as often. And I would only watch watch it one out of five when there's like nothing else on to watch. Other than then, then that I'm making music, writing music, and filming vlogs, or watching sports. God first on that note. But I ain't gonna lie, Disney has done a phenomenal job at continuously creating new shows that you want to watch regardless, you know. And God bless Disney. I mean, I literally have, think I've given them a few shout outs for some of the shows and they're just amazing. One of their one of their uh, previous movies titled Upside Down Magic was flawless and phenomenal, if you were to ask me. I loved it. I liked it. I watched it two or three times. It's great. It's phenomenal. Um, and so on. So like I say, give Disney its props, let alone for what they've done with some of their Disney Plus shows. Depending on what your likes and interests are of that, they've done a phenomenal job. It all depends on your likes and your interests of the shows. So I mean, and so on and so on. But like I say, I really have not watched too much of Disney over the last year or over the last few few years because I've been way more established in sports, sports and music, you know, and you know, and family time with friends. Way more established with all three of those to care about what's next on Disney or what's next on Nick or what's next on Cartoon Network. But I did grow up heavily watching all three, let alone definitely uh, Disney and Nickelodeon, just to let you know. But to get back into that, Sabrina Carpenter, she's known for Girl Meets World with Rowan Blanchard. And I definitely went off on a whole analysis last night of it's so amazing how Sabrina Carpenter went on to, you know, have a few more roles and do a few more albums. And Rowan Blanchard hasn't released anything, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely music-wise. I don't know about TV-wise, movie-wise. She may have been involved in something that just went low-key and didn't have a ton of prom promotion for it. But it's so amazing because just like Bella Thorne and Zendaya, Zendaya has consistently stayed in the mainstream ever since Shake It Up. She was in Shake It Up, and then she was in Casey Undercover, and then she was in, you know, quite a few movies. And the latest, you know, you know, you know, the one of the the latest, I want to say trilogies, if not just series that she's involved in, is the Tom Holland Spider Man series. So she's been in quite some things. And has been a complete, I want to say a consistent A list celebrity, mainstream celebrity, you know, I was her entire career. 
I mean, Zendaya is must-watch, must-see TV, you know? And I ain't gonna lie, I had a crush on Zendaya when she was on Shake It Up. I'm not gonna cap. I had a crush on Zendaya when she was on Shake It Up, you know? And I'm 22 years old, so when um, Shake It Up came out, you do the math, you know, how old we but we uh, both were. So I had a crush on her when that show, I think it was, it started in 2012 when I was thinking, I had a crush on her. And I was in middle school, if I'm not mistaken. I was in um, seventh grade, I think. Yeah, I think I was in seventh grade. I think I was in seventh grade when Shake It Up came out. And if I'm not mistaken, it was 2012 when it came out. And I had a crush on Zendaya. I promise to God. You know, Bella Thorne's, you know, cute too. But I had a crush on Zendaya. That's the girl I'm like, I love her. She's awesome, you know, and so on. Uh, and like I said, I mean, Zendaya's just been popping ever since. I mean, it's like her career sells itself, her her acting skills, her character, her talent, you know, everything about Zendaya sells itself. Zendaya literally is, you know, a big brand, and God bless her. God bless her. But absolutely, I grew up watching her on Shake It Up. I grew up watching um, um, Austin and Ali. I grew up watching Bunked, Jesse. A uh, few shows on Disney. I can, I, you know, Bella and the Bulldogs. A few shows on you know, Nick, Nickelodeon. I can name that I grew up watching, and it's it's just so amazing how I've grown with some of these stars. You know, as you know, you know, Sweet Life on Dex, Sweet Life is Zach and Cody. Even though I'm naming mostly Disney shows, but you get the point. I've grew, I grew up on a lot of stuff. You know, and God bless the girl named Lilamar. I promise to God, the girl looks like a fully grown supermodel right now. Look up Lilamar. She was on Bella and the Bulldogs. And if you look at her from 20 whatever year that was to now, Lilamar looks like a fully grown superstar or a fully grown supermodel, actually, or both. Um, the last show she was on, uh, Lilamar, last, excuse me, last show she was on was uh, called... Uh, I want to say Knight's Armor or something like that she was on. Some, something on, on Nickelodeon had to do with Knights. Uh, that's that that's what she was on. Um, and I, I I don't remember the last time I had watched that show, but I saw, like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. I think I know this girl. I think I know her. And, and I did. It, it, you know, it was Lilamar. And she uh, she looked, she, I mean, if you check her, check her out, she looks like a supermodel now, you know. And it's amazing how time, puberty, and everything just changes a person, you know, mentally and physically. Lil Mar looks like a supermodel now, and so on, and it's amazing. And you can almost never tell how tall these, these people are. On TV, they look like they're probably 5'10", 6' foot tall, and I'm 5'7", so I'll be like thinking to myself, are you really that tall, or is that just the, the TV making you look taller, etc. But Sabrina Carpenter, you know... <laughs> it's amazing. I just I'm going off on all these different tangents, but I mean I grew up I grew up I feel like I grew up with all these guys, all these girls. I feel like I grew up watching all of them on TV, and I did. I really did. I grew up on all this stuff, and we've all progressed so beautifully as time has gone on. And I'm not gonna lie, I had a definitely I had a crush on Zendaya back in the day. I had a crush on her back when I was in middle school. I had a crush on her. God bless her her, her soul. And I'm not joking. Lil Lamar, if you look at her nowadays, she looks like a full blown supermodel. Not even playing. And Zendaya actually definitely is one because, again, look at her on all these. Uh, on, uh, Zendaya is everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. She is everywhere. Zendaya is on every, I want to say she's on every billboard, but she's definitely on every magazine and promoting all these perfumes. And Zendaya is a, a bona fide, she is a celebrity. Zendaya is everything, everywhere. Zendaya is a, I mean, I mean. The girl blew up. The girl blew Her brand blew up. Zendaya is so marketable, so profitable. Zendaya blew up. And and I've thought over the last, like, couple years, dang, where did Bella Thorne's career go? I mean, you were both on this show at the same time, shake it up, and you were both so-called best friends, you know, you, you know, on the show, which makes me think to myself, how many people, I guess, as they're acting together, they're best friends, and then as their show dies down, you know, and they go there quote unquote separate ways, how many of them stay best friends? Because it doesn't seem like too many stay best friends. Some people, it seems like they're just best friends because they were on a show together or they're, or they, I say they were, they're always paid to pretend like they're, they're best friends, you know, in, you know, in, you know, or whatever I can, you know, or whatever I can put there. I'm not trying to shame their, their relationship at all. I'm just trying to figure out with Bella Thorne, what the heck happened and do, her and Zendaya even talk to each other anymore. Do they? I mean, are they still 
besties from back in the day or are they, you know, you know, distant memories. But I think you kind of get the get, get the point. But I grew up on all this stuff. Every last bit of it, I grew up on it. Um, and it's it really is amazing. Uh, but absolutely, Sabrina Carpenter, I never would have thought that she was going to be... Sp I swear, when I saw that last time, I'm like, Sabrina Carpenter, Spider-Gwen? Oh my, what? I never would have thought... Never would have thought she would be cast as Spider Gwen. Never, but from the trailer that I saw last night, she's been cast as Spider Gwen. It makes sense, I guess. You know, God bless her soul. And I mean, I I, I love you know. I mean, when you whenever you get the opportunity to put on the costume and be a superhero in the movies, do it. I mean. I can't blame you. I mean, that's almost everybody's dream is to be a, you know, a superhero in the movies. Uh, and, and God bless her, her soul. I mean, so she's been cast as Spider-Gwen from the trailer that I saw last night. And so God bless Serena Carpenter. And I think I posted it. Yeah, I think I posted it on my on Twitter and on my NJ to the City News TV Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, you literally can make, you can give Sabrina Carpenter, I mean, I'm sorry. You, 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 you can give Spider-Gwen, Spider-Gwen. MJ, uh, Miles Morales, um, Spider Man. You can you 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 can give so many of these of these stars, not just in the Spider Verse, but really in comics in general. You, you know, uh, uh, Kate Bishop with uh, Haley Steinfeld. You can give so many of these so many of these characters their their own standalone film. Probably right now, if not wait two years, and I'm willing to bet you it'll break numbers. It will, it will, it will break records. It will do numbers. Like all these, all these characters are supremely marketable. Let alone profitable. Let alone all these actors and actresses that they're getting to play their, these characters. They're again extremely profitable, very marketable. And I'm telling you, give it two years, three years, maybe even four years, you're gonna break records. You're gonna do numbers. Whether you do it, you know, what, whether you put it in both theaters or Disney Plus. It's all gonna it's it's all gonna be great. It's all gonna be great, and that's why I said I look forward to all this cinema coming out, all these Disney Plus shows coming out. I just hope to God that we're in a better state as a planet, let alone as a country, to enjoy this all together in more peace and unity rather than what we are today. Because I'm not trying to use all this as my escape from the real world, even though I can understand why anybody and everybody would. Because who am I kidding? If you look at Though, if you look at the news, you would think that there's so much sin in the world, let alone there probably is. But you would also think the world's probably going to end at the end of this year, you know, and so on. I mean, it's just amazing how far God has blessed us to be, but how deep down the rabbit hole feels like we've gone, you know, as the days go on. You you, you know you know what I'm saying? But I, I'm, I'm amazed that God bless Sabrina Carpenter. Um... I have not listened to every album that she's dropped, but I listened to the la I, the last album I listened to was uh, Evolution, her 2015 album, if I'm not mistaken, or 2016. I think it was 2016. Her 2016 album, Evolution, was the last one I listened to, and my favorite song off of it is On Purpose. That's my favorite song off the album. That's my uh, favorite. I mean, and, and that's the last album by Sabrina Carpenter I, I, I listened to, but Sabrina Carpenter definitely musically is an example of various Disney stars over the years that, you know, claim to be in music, but you know, how often do they release is the bigger question because so many claim to be musically talented, but it's like outside of your show, you're not dropping anything. So how musically talented are you or better yet, how committed to music are you, you know? Which is vice versa with people like, you know, Rowan Blanchard and so on and so on. I'm not denying they're musically talented, but it's like, wait a minute, outside of your show, I haven't seen you drop anything. Like, zip, not a nothing. But Sabrina, who was your, your main co-star on the show, she dropped like three, four albums already. Where's your project say? You know, are you not as musically committed as she is? Or what is it? I know you're musically talented, but what is it, you know? And it's quite amazing.